Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Schleter with today's Tom's Take. It's good to be with you today again. My memory uh, was jogged a little bit this morning. I remembered back when I was a pastor at Grace Lutheran Church in Abilene, Texas. Yes, uh, just picture me. Uh, I had beautiful robes on. I was a Lutheran pastor, but filled with God's spirit. And I remember when I was there, uh, it was when the Lord really started doing that move in me to listen carefully to his spirit. But I was doing that in a traditional setting, which made it very difficult. We were limited to one hour. And if we had communion that Sunday, my sermon could not be 15 minutes, it had to be 10 minutes so that we could make sure that we got communion done by the end of the hour. Can't believe I used to be there. But anyway, I remember us joking about it because out on the church sign, it gave the time of services and all of that. And I often thought, we need to change the byline at the bottom of our sermon, I mean, bottom of our sign. And it should simply say, one hour Lutheranizing. Now, you'll remember in cleaning services, it was one hour martinizing, uh, a process of taking care of your laundry. And we laughed and joked and jested about that, but in reality, it was the truth. And I can remember many times trying to push the edge of that, trying to introduce things, uh, introducing more of a flow of the Spirit, and it just wouldn't happen. As much as it was a yearning in my spirit, So when we came uh, in 1988, this month, 1988, to Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Arlington, that was still burning in me. And the people that were here said they wanted to move ahead with renewal and the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to give all that history, but prior to that, the church here had been up to around 400 people attending regularly on Sundays, but through a period of horrible uh, rebellion and division and strife in the church, um, it had dwindled down to nothing. And it was really surprising that the church building still remained in the possession of these, oh, 12 to 20 people that were now in the church. So we just started, and we said, well, we're going to let the Holy Spirit move, and we really did that on Friday evenings when we just had a just a wonderful worship service and a time of prayer and a, a message that I would give. But on Sunday mornings, well, it was still just let's do it for one hour. And it wasn't that I was satisfied with that, but that was just the tradition. I can remember really being challenged by that because the Lord had been birthing worship in me for a long time. I'm one of those Hosanna Integrity guys or Maranatha Music guys, and it was birthing in me, and I'm thinking, we really need to sing these songs. We would do them on Friday nights. Why can't we do them more on Sunday morning? Now, you need to understand about something with the Lutheran liturgy is when we would open up our book, it had the service at the beginning that you were to follow uh, for your one-hour service. And in there, there were little red instructions. They were called rubrics. And the little red instructions would tell you this is what happens next. It's like we had to be told. It was so by rote in us. But yet it was was there. And I remember asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I really would like just to open this up more, especially in worship. And he said, well, read the rubric. And I said, really, Lord? I don't want to read those things which have kept us pinned down. Well, at the beginning of each service, there was what they called the hymn of praise. It was all written out. It had its own music, and it would last, oh, maybe a minute. But as he had me read the rubric, he said, you may use this. He didn't say it. The rubric says it. You may use this or any other appropriate hymns or hymns of praise. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, 
So our one and a half minute hymn of praise turned into 30 or 40 or 45 minutes of praise. What I believe happened in that moment is we simply did something which all of us need to do, especially in the church. Give him space. Give space to the Holy Spirit to move as he desires to move. Now that was 35 years ago. And we have intentionally, over the years, continued to say, Lord, this service is not ours. It's yours. We are simply here to give you glory, to give you honor, and to receive revelation and direction for what you need us to be as your representatives on earth. Now, it took us a long time to get there and to stay there, but it's essential to be there. And a lot of people say, well, we need to follow a pattern that the, of order that we need to do. And I said, well, there is always order, but it's order that is designed by God, not by us. The people are always amazed that come and worship here at our small congregation because they've never seen uh, such a, a, a awareness of giving freedom to the people that are attending. Not just me at the front of the church, not just me. We don't have a stage, but it's, it's not a platform. It's an opportunity for literally the grassroots people of the kingdom of God, the ecclesia, to release revelation, to be used, to pray over, to, to speak healing over people. We do that quite often as the Spirit leads in the midst of our worship service, in the midst of our time together. And, and let me tell you really quickly here, it's not about time. Because we've seen that manifest in some of our prayer rooms. Where I'm sitting right now, it's the war room. Here in about an hour and a half, we'll have about 20 people from like six congregations and some online that will gather here together for prayer for an hour. And we give space to the Holy Spirit so that we will decree and pray what needs to be decreed and prayed. It's very important in this hour that we do this because if we're not moving by the Holy Spirit, we're probably moving by our own desires or by traditions, or by the rote memory things that we've always done. Now, I tried many times back in those traditional days to just introduce some new songs and new things that would kind of spur people along and, and get them more into the flow of the Holy Spirit. But it was very difficult because they always wanted to default back to the traditional order. I can't tell you how many times the Lord has interrupted our order when we simply give him space. This phrase was coming to me yesterday as I was listening to uh, Dutch Sheets Give Him 15, and he was quoting from an article that uh, Larry Sparks had written. I know Larry. He's a marvelous prophet of God. And he gave three indicators that need to be a part of the church. I'm only going to deal with one. Let me just quote this one paragraph from Larry. We're coming up, or coming up is a significant event that is giving space for the Holy Spirit to move and will serve as a setup for both America and the nations to experience suddenly outbreaks of the Holy Spirit. On August 30th, Tim Sheets is hosting a one-night healing summit at Oasis Church in Middletown, Ohio. And you can look that up. I encourage you to look that up. I've had a strong sense of expectation that the Lord is going to use this night as a forerunner gathering and have been praying almost daily for it. It's a pioneering meeting meant to break something open and like a domino effect, spiritually shift the nations. And he again stresses that it's giving space. It's giving an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to do something. 
Now, I want to personally encourage you here at Prince of Peace House of Prayer in Arlington. We will be hosting part of that live stream coming in from Ohio. It starts at 6 o'clock Central Time. I suggest you get here at 5 o'clock. But we will simply be listening online to this, but then opportunity will be given to fully give space to Holy Spirit and to allow sudden healings and miracles and the desires of God, desire of God's heart for us to come into fullness to be released. Now, whether you're coming to a Healing Summit live stream, as a matter of fact, Kay and I will actually be on site in Ohio while my congregation will be live streaming it here. But whether we're talking about a healing summit or whether we're talking about a Sunday morning service, and I know if you're not the pastor, you don't really have control over this, but if you are a pastor, I strongly encourage you, just give Holy Spirit space. Let him interrupt the meeting. I didn't finish a thought I mentioned earlier. It's not about time. As a lot of people said, well, if you're going to give the Holy Spirit time, then just expect to, then we have to be here for six hours or seven hours or eight hours. No, you, no, you don't. If the Holy Spirit moves, he can move quickly and powerfully, and it may just be, again, an hour-long service. But just lay everything else down. Give space to him in your own personal life. Give space to him as you go to work. Give space to him with your family. Give space to Holy Spirit. Because in doing so, you will experience the suddenlies of God. Give him space. Blessings to all of you today. I'll see you again tomorrow.